Hi, my name's Baz Kinder and I'm from Wellington PPM. We're Microsoft Gold Partners specialising in project and portfolio management and we've also got a silver competency in learning. Today I'll be providing a high level overview of Microsoft Project Server 2010. The webcast agenda for today will start off by having a look at the evolution of Microsoft Project. I'll also go over the findings of the Gartner PPM Market Scope 2011 report. We'll then have a look at the most common business pain points that tend to exist in organizations in relation to project management. I'll then have a look at how Microsoft Project Server 2010 can help overcome some of those issues. And I'll provide an overview of the Project 2010 solution set, followed by a solution demonstration. Last but not least, I will provide an overview of PPM in a Box, which is our exclusive 12-day Microsoft Project Server 2010 deployment package. Let's have a look at the evolution of Microsoft Project. So back in 987, Microsoft released the desktop scheduling tool, and at that time it was primarily geared towards individual project managers. As organizations have grown in maturity, as more and more people have wanted visibility of what's happening on project, and as the need to collaborate on projects has come about, Microsoft released Project Server. So we're currently on version 2010, which is the fifth release. So it's quite a mature solution. It's not just me saying that. These are all server findings of Gartner. In this year's Market Scope 2011 report, where they look at all of the leading players in the project and portfolio management space, they gave Microsoft Project Server 2010 a strong positive rating. Now, the thing that sets Microsoft apart from some of the other vendors in the strong positive category of a Microsoft are the only suppliers that allow you to deploy their solution either in-house using your own architecture or to deploy it as software as a service whilst everyone else in the strong positive category only allows you to deploy their solution as software as a service hence tying you in either to monthly contracts or annual contracts looking at some of the quotes from Gartner they also say that Project Server 2010 is a landmark release for Microsoft because it's in this release in which they include SharePoint 2010 as a foundation for things such as workflow, document management, and collaboration. They also comment on the fact that Microsoft's licensing is very cost competitive. Let's have a look at the overview of Microsoft Project 2010 and have a look at the components that make up the solution set. So centrally, you have Microsoft Project Server 2010. Now that's really a central repository for project related information, whether that's your project schedules, your enterprise resource pool, templates, anything project related, it's held within Project Server. On a day-to-day -day basis to interact, most users will use what is known as Project Web App, shortened down to PWA. Depending on what group you belong to, whether you're an executive, project manager or resource manager, you all go to exactly the same URL. However, thanks to security trimming, you can control not only what people see, but also what people can do within PWA. So you might determine that the only group allowed to see the resource center, for example, are the resource managers. Now, whilst within PWA, project managers can do some light project scheduling, they would probably prefer to use Project Professional 2010 as that offers more functionality. Now, there is a breakdown of functionality available on the web. If you would like it, then please contact us at Wellington PPM and uh, we can send you that document. Last but not least, you can also integrate Project Server 2010 with other Microsoft solutions as well as other line of business systems. Drilling down further into Project Server 2010, you can see that there are two components that make up the actual solution itself. Before I go into more detail about the actual components, let me just make it clear that not every organization will deploy, first of all, both components, or secondly, every piece of functionality that's available within Project Server. It's always configured and scaled to match the environment. Let's have a look now at a very high level at the two components. The first one is concerned with top-down portfolio management. This is where projects are proposed, it's where business cases can be built, and it's where projects can then ultimately be prioritized and either approved or rejected based upon whether or not they align to corporate strategy and what kind of return on investment they will provide. The second component, which is something that we are focusing on today, is concerned with bottom-up project management or project execution. It's where you would do your day-to-day -day project management activities of project scheduling, resource management, reporting, and so on. Here we see an example PPM process if you were using the full functionality of Project Server 2010. However, before I go into this, let me just reiterate that Project Server can be configured to suit any environment. So even though there's a lot of functionality available, you don't have to use all of it. You can use the areas of functionality that are relevant for your organization and fit for purpose. In the create phase, a project request can be created using an enterprise project type. If the project is approved to go on to the next stage, then the project business case would be built up. 
In the select phase, the projects that demonstrate the highest benefit, the best return on investment and best strategic alignment are reviewed and approved, in which case the projects are selected and a project manager would then be appointed. In the plan phase of a project, the project manager can finalize the project schedule, any resource requirements or documentation, and then publish the project. And at the same time, they have an option to create what's called a project site, which is where you would hold all project documentation, risk logs, issue logs, and change logs. When the project is published, that's when the work is pushed out to any named team members. The team members in the manage phase can manage their workload and report on progress using the centralized My Work section within PWA. And team members can also access the project specific project sites. And senior managers at any time can access real time dashboards, whilst land managers can review resource needs and work allocation. Here we see the findings of a survey that was published a few years ago by the Centre for Business Practices. So they went out and surveyed a range of organisations ranging from SMEs right the way to large multinationals to find out from them what their biggest pain points were in relation to project management. And the top four issues we see listed are the ones that we see most often when we first engage with clients. They are inconsistent approaches to how projects are managed, allocating resources and resource management in general, too many of the wrong projects linking into project selection, making sure the projects align to corporate strategy and will deliver some form of return on investment. And last but not least, we have project visibility, whereby many of the clients that we deal with don't have a centralized project register or easy access to a selection of dashboards linking into projects, portfolios and programs. Moving on, let's now have a look at Microsoft Project Server 2010. So here we are now on the PWA Project Web App homepage. What I'll do today is provide a very high level overview of the environment, but do bear in mind that we have got more detailed videos available on our YouTube channel at Wellington PPM. First thing that we see here on the left hand side is a quick access toolbar menu. And one of the first options we see it relates to projects and the project center. That's where I would go as a project manager or as a senior level exec to get centralized visibility of all of the projects that we're eligible to see. Within the project center, there are a variety of views available and we will have a look at how that works shortly. Further down, we have my work, and this is where I would come as a team member to view any work that's been assigned to me, and it's where I can also complete timesheets or monitor any issues and risks that I might have assigned to me. Moving down, we've got the resource center, and this is where I would log in as a line manager or as a resource manager to view resource availability and resource capacity. And I can also get a centralized viewpoint of all the enterprise resources within the system. Moving down within strategy, that's where I can prioritize which projects align best to corporate strategy or deliver the best return on investment before either rejecting them or approving them to progress on the next stage. Moving down, we've got the Business Intelligence Center, and that is where I can access a series of dashboards relating to the project portfolio. Further down, we also see a settings section because I'm currently logged in as an administrator, so I can go in and administer the project server itself. Now, let's say I'd logged in purely as a team member, then the only option that I might actually see might be my work. The rest of the options might quite simply be invisible. In the central area of the screen, we have a reminder section. This is where I'm notified about any new outstanding tasks, timesheets, approvals, status reports, or issues and risks. So the first section I'd like to show is the project center. So I'm currently viewing all projects by phase. And if we have a look at how this is set up, we've currently got a workflow in action. And if I minimize some of these areas, you can see how the workflow looks. And at the same time, you see a list of all the projects that I've currently got eligibility to view. There are also RAG views available, milestone views, but that was a very, very quick look at how the project center looks. Moving on, let's have a look at tasks under my work. Within tasks, I can see a list of all the projects that I'm involved with, as well as a list of all of the tasks that I have to complete. I can see start and finish dates, as well as other information. Here on the calendar view, I can also see on a weekly basis how much work's been planned for me per task, and that's where I can also provide my actuals. I can also drill down into the tasks to get further information. So here I see general details, recent task changes, attachments, contacts, who's within the project team, related assignments, what needs to finish before I can start my work and what is dependent upon me finishing my task on time. In the resource center, I see a list of all the resources that exist within the organization. I can also group resources in a variety of ways. I'm currently viewing all resources by role. 
And here you can see I've actually selected a range of resources who match the role of analyst. To see their availability, I can click on resource availability. Within the resource availability view, I'm currently viewing all assignment work by resource. I could also view assignment work by project, remaining availability, or work itself. And again, I can play around this view and I can alter the view options so I could change the date range. I could even change the units and I could also include proposed bookings. But those items there are covered in a lot more detail in a separate video purely on resource management. The next section I could have shown you would have been strategy, but that is quite a complex section. And we've got a separate video on portfolio analysis that's available in our YouTube channel at Wellington PPM. So I'll skip that for now and I will go straight to business intelligence. And I've actually already got that page open. So if I click here. So here we are now within the business intelligence center. And we're currently viewing the summary dashboard. There's really no limit to how many dashboards you have within this section. And it's quite easy to have dashboards set up purely to look at project cost, project risks or issues, resource dashboards. Really, there is no limit. The great thing about this dashboard is that rather than presenting purely a static list of bar charts, you can actually drill down and slice and dice the data however you like. Traditionally, this is something that you could only really have done using an application such as Excel. So reporting possibilities really are quite endless. But that does for now conclude our very short overview demo of Project Server 2010. But please do have a look at the more detailed videos that we have available on our YouTube channel at Wellington PPM. Or if you would like a more tailored demonstration, then please get in touch using the contact us options on our website, which is www.wellingtonppm.co.uk. Now, PPM in a box is our pre-built Microsoft Project Server 2010 deployment package. It's designed to get your organization up and running within 12 days at a fixed price. To get full details on the package itself, then please visit our website, which is wellingtonppm.co.uk. On the website, you can also request a callback and a member of our team will be in touch with you within 24 hours.